Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Six Shadows, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a guide on how to play AP Karma in the mid lane. But before I can bring you guys a mid lane guide, I'm going to need the approval of the mid lane god himself, the one and only Faker. So let's tab over to Skype, see what he's up to, and see if we can get his approval. Uh, that was a little mean. So, I'm making a guide for AP- Timo? Ah, uh, no dude, not Timo. The guide is for AP Karma. Timo. Uh, are you alright man? Your webcam has heaps of static, I can't see anything. What the fuck, man? Where did you get that outfit? Alright, let's get to the guide. First of all, congratulations for making it this far into the video. I thought a lot of people would have closed it by now. So, I'm going to reward you guys. Here's a short little soundbite of my friend role-playing as Karma. <laughs> so, the first part of the guide is why should you play Karma? Now, she's a very safe laner. She'll almost always go even or win the lane, unless you make a massive mistake. She has really good trading potential, and she's a lane bully against immobile champions. I'll go over that later. She has decent damage throughout the whole game, although she kind of falls off towards the end of the game. But she's still very useful because she can provide utility and peels. She's a good pick into the recent assassin meta with her shield and her heal from the empowered W. Her only real weakness is that she doesn't really provide sustained damage, so she wouldn't be a good pick if your team had a tank jungler and tank top. You'd only want to choose her if you had someone else who could provide sustained damage on the team. Alright, next we're going to look at runes, masteries, what skills to level up, and the item build. First up is runes. It's a pretty standard rune page. You're going to want flat magic pen reds, health per level yellows, these can be swapped for armor if you're versus Pantheon or Talon, but usually not needed. So usually health per level yellows. Six cooldown per level blues, which will give you 10% CDR at level 18. Three flat magic resist blues and flat AP quints. For masteries, you want to go 12, 18, 0 with Thunderlords. It's very easy to proc on Karma with Empowered Q and Tether, which makes your laning phase very strong. And skill wise, we're looking to max Q first, which will provide us with really high burst damage. After that, I go on to max E in almost all situations. However, there could be some scenarios where there are no immediate threats to you, and you could max W first to give you more damage, but usually you're always going to want to max E second, and then W at the end. Alright, now it's time for item build. I always start with Doran's rings in two pots. My first item is always Morello's into Sork Shoes, and then next is Situational. You should always have your build Situational, you don't want to build the same items every game. For example, if they have dangerous assassins, I will build my Zonyas before my Ludens. If they have a lot of tanks, I will build my Void Staff before my Ludens. Something like that. But the usual build I follow is on the screen now. Morello is into Sork Shoes, then Ludens for extra burst and move speed, then Zonyas, Void Staff, and Death Cap. Alright, time for the early game. The early game on Karma is very chilled and usually very safe. Just sit back and farm while also trying to harass with your autos. Try and land all your Qs onto your lane opponent, which is usually very difficult so, since most of the times they'll be standing behind their minions. So you're going to wait for them to go in for the last hit and then throw the Q at the creeps so they're hit by the explosion damage. Uh, now, possibly my favorite thing about Karma is the level 2 all-in potential against immobile and weak early champions. In this clip you can see me going aggressive on Akali at level 2. I just tether her and follow her until she is rooted and then throw out my empowered Q and I manage to secure an early kill without ignite. 
Against better players, obviously, they will not underestimate Karma's damage, but the same combo will work against them. Wait for them to come in for a last hit, put your tether on them, follow them until they're rooted, and then throw out your empowered Q. It's extremely effective against champions with low mobility. The reason I started playing Karma in the first place was after I got absolutely wrecked by one when I was playing Karthus. She would just keep doing this combo to me over and over. It's super fucking annoying. Try to take note of where your enemy jungler is before you do it though, or they will see a pattern and come in to gank you when you try and do the tether combo. Uh, the combo is pretty easy to do, but here's another quick demonstration against an Orianna. The laning phase against Karma, it's just super annoying unless you're playing someone like Yasuo or Zerath or something like that. Something long range or something that is a very strong duelist. So you can just jump on her when she tethers you. Alright, let's get into the mid game. In my opinion, this is where Karma is at her strongest. Right after you've completed your Morellos, you can output huge damage. I'll show an example of the damage in this next clip. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, the damage output is pretty crazy in the mid game, especially if you manage to get ahead early. Now for the mid game, you should start looking to roam around the map uh, with your jungler if possible. If the jungler has some form of initiation, you can speed him up with your shield and let him initiate for you. At this point in the game, you could consider using your mantra to empower your shield ability to shield the whole team and speed them all up. But majority of the time, I prefer to use it on Q for more damage and save the empowered shields for the late game team fights. Alright, now it's time for the late game. I don't actually have a lot of footage for the late game. I recently returned to League after one or two years. And I'm in the process of ranking up again, so these games are from a lower elo, which usually resulted in an easy win. The goal for the late game and late game team fights will be to peel assassins and tanky bruisers off your fed carries by using your tether. Consider using your mantra to empower your shield if you think you can get enough value from it by hitting multiple teammates. Try and position yourself so you can throw Qs into the back line and empower Qs if you think you can get a good one off and constantly use your shield to speed up champions with CC. An example of this would be Pantheon or Blitzcrank, just any champion that needs to be close by. And yeah, that's it for the guide guys. I appreciate it so much if you watched this far into the video. I'd appreciate it even more if you liked the video and subscribed to my channel. I plan on making some League of Legends videos in the future. Maybe some more videos of this style with different pro players for different champions. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'm going to leave you with a clip of me being one shot by a Cassadin with 30 kills. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, Alright, here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it. Now's the time. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>